If you enjoy my videos, please check out my website at creationsciencefiction.com where you'll find articles on creationism, science, and my blog. If you really enjoy what I'm doing, please consider becoming a contributor at the link in the video description. Welcome to Educate for Life Online. This is the fourth class in our course, Created on Purpose or Evolved by Chance. Today we're going to be talking about dating methods, as in how old is the Earth and how do we know. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to take another look at Kevin Conover's Arguments for a Young Earth, as found in his online course on creationism. He mentioned dating methods, but what you'll see in this video is that not one thing he mentioned is actually a method used to date the age of the Earth. How much sediment is carried in the Mississippi River each year? This chart shows how many tons of mud are carried out. It would take 30,000 years to accumulate the amount of mud that's currently in the delta. Now you might be asking, well, if the Bible says it's only 6,000 years, why are there 30,000 years of mud in the delta? Well, most likely what happened is the majority of the mud was carried out during the flood as the waters rushed off the continents and rushed out of the, the Mississippi, and then there's been a slow, steady rate from there on out. As long as the age of the earth is less than 30,000 years, then our hypothesis that the biblical account is true makes sense. What doesn't make sense is to say that the earth is billions of years old when we only have 30,000 years of mud in the delta. That doesn't make sense. Well, mud in the delta isn't used by any scientist as a dating method to date the age of the earth. We can actually trace the route of the ancient Mississippi River going back to before when Mr. Conover thinks Noah's flood occurred. We also know that long ago the Mississippi River didn't even exist. This is what North America looked like about 75 million years ago. This tree is named Methuselah after the man in the Bible who lived longer than any other person. Its exact location is kept a close secret in order to protect it from the public. It's located in the White Mountains of California in Inyo National Forest. 4,300 years old would be the max age for this tree, and it's very likely it's younger. Why is it that there are no trees that can be accurately dated that are older than 4,400 years old? Well, I'd like to take a guess that it's no coincidence that the Bible records there was a flood 4,400 years ago. That would make sense because all the trees and all the life was wiped out. And so this is the oldest tree in the world. Well, we certainly don't use a living tree to date the age of the earth. We don't even use these petrified trees that were alive 225 million years ago. I took these pictures here in Arizona in April when my friend Ollie there visited from England. I remember taking this one and saying, I'm going to use it in a creationist video. The Great Barrier Reef is the largest living organism in the world. It's been growing for a very long time. Can you take a guess as to how long it's been growing? Well, it's less than 4,200 years old. Why is it that the oldest coral reef in the world is only 4,200 years old? Could it be there was a flood 4,400 years ago? I think so. Actually, the oldest coral reef in the world is 480 million years old and is located in Vermont. Of course, they're not alive, but we wouldn't expect them to be today. We know from studying coral reefs today that they form at the bottom of shallow seas. They also take a long time to grow. Yet we see them in some of the upper layers that creationists say were formed by Noah's flood. How do they explain that? What about Niagara Falls? The rocky ledge above Niagara Falls has been eroding for nearly 9,900 years, according to whole earth science. The falls are eroding and they, they go backwards each time because as the falls come off, they erode the rock underneath them. Here is a panoramic 1872 woodcut of Niagara Gorge looking south from Lake Ontario to the falls and Lake Erie in the di distance. In 1841, Charles Lyell visited the falls. He said they were 10,000 years old based on 16 inches per year of erosion. Now my recommendation is that you do go visit the falls soon because pretty soon it's just going to be Niagara River, no Niagara Falls. Really? Don't worry, that's not going to happen too soon. The real question is, if the Earth is billions of years old, why are there any falls left at all? 
Could it be that 4,400 years ago there was a worldwide flood and the water's been flowing through Niagara Falls ever since then? And most of the erosion happened quickly and then it's been happening at a consistent rate? That makes much more sense than to say that the falls are millions or billions of years old because they wouldn't exist anymore if that was the case. He just told us what Lyell's estimated age of the falls was, and that was back in the 1800s, and he got it pretty close. No one is saying they were around for millions or billions of years. That entire region was covered by the Laurentide Ice Sheet during the last Ice Age. As the ice sheet retreated, the entire area began to rebound or uplift as the weight on the Earth's crust was reduced. The water flowing off this uplifted area created the spectacular falls that we see today. Another limiting factor is the salt in the ocean. 450 million tons of salt are added to the ocean every year through the runoff that comes from rivers and rain and other water sources. Only 27% of that is taken out of the ocean through tectonic activity. What this means is the upper limit for the age of the oceans is 62 million years. Oceans today are 3.6% salt. They could have gone from fresh water to 3.6% salt in less than 5,000 years. What we see here is that the creation account that the Earth is only around 6,000 years old makes a lot more sense than saying that the oceans are billions and billions of years old. There's no way they can be billions of years old. Max limit would be 62 million. And that just doesn't work for evolutionary theory because evolutionists say the first single-celled organism came into existence around 3.6, 3.2 billion years ago and then evolved from there out of the oceans. I wasn't really that familiar with creationist arguments on ocean salinity, so I went to my newly redesigned website at creationsciencefiction.com. I clicked on the link to the new Refuting Creationism page where you'll find articles and short videos by myself and some of my favorite YouTubers. Here's a short clip from a video by Tony Reed that answers Kevin's questions. On average, the ocean's salinity is about 35 parts per thousand. With 4 billion tons of salt being deposited each year, you'd expect a detectable increase in ocean salinity. In 2012, in the journal Science, Paul J. Durack, Susan E. Wishfuls, and Richard J. Matiar published their findings after examining global measurements between 1950 and 2000. Although salinity varied from year to year, overall there was no significant change in ocean salinity. These observations have been repeated several times by others, but it seems at first counterintuitive that a constant flow of billions of tons of sodium into the world's oceans would not cause ocean water to become increasingly salty. There are actually several ways in which salt is removed from seawater. The most readily visible method is simply deposition on shore. As water levels decrease, they leave shallow deposits of seawater on shore. When salt water evaporates, it leaves most of its salt behind. After repeated events such as this, a hardened salt deposit is formed. The floor of the Mediterranean Sea is a deposit such as this. In its past, the Mediterranean Mediterranean Sea has dried up more than once, leaving a salt flat that remains even after water returns to the basin. Also, clams, oysters, and several other ocean shellfish have hard shells comprised mostly of calcium and containing significant amounts of sodium. Ocean water supplies both of those ions to their shells. Additionally, all sediments and salts in the ocean have a tendency to sink toward the ocean floor. As the continental plates slide across the planet, they push the ocean floor downward and the salt and sediments with it in a process known as subduction. While that's happening, the seafloor itself is constantly spreading due to volcanic activity. This continuously creates a new seafloor that replaces the subducted seafloor. So you see, Kevin was literally standing, sort of, on part of the answer to his own question. I'll put a link to that complete video in the video description. If you've ever been to Carlsbad Caverns or any other caverns where they have stalactites, many people believe that stalactites and stalagmites take millions of years to form. But there's plenty of evidence to demonstrate that stalactites can form very quickly under the right circumstances. This is the Lincoln Memorial built in 1922. This photo was taken in 1960s. Clearly these stalactites didn't take millions of years to form. Well, first of all, nobody says they need to take millions of years to form. And there's no such thing as a stalactite. There are stalactites and stalagmites. I remember first learning about them in grade school, and our teacher told us to remember them by remembering that stalactites contains a C for ceiling and stalagmite a G for ground. 
Any scientific website will tell you that they form at varying rates. Two of the main factors are the type of rock and the amount of precipitation. At the current rate of erosion, the continents would erode flat in 14 million years. The fact of the matter is, is that the rate of erosion is much quicker than the rate of uplift of mountains. And if the Earth is billions of years old, why do we still have mountains? It doesn't make sense. It's just not true that the rate of erosion always exceeds the rate of uplift. We can measure the rate that the Himalayas are rising today, and it may only be a couple inches per year, but that's a lot of elevation over millions of years. Of course, if you don't believe in millions of years, you can never understand that. Even if plate tectonic movement stops, when the mountains erode, the area underneath them is subject to isostatic uplift, just like we saw with receding glaciers. Now, on the other hand, if you're a biblical creationist, you believe that the rocks, that, that the mountains were formed quickly, rapidly, uh, during Noah's flood. And that's why we have these gigantic mountain ranges, despite the fact that erosion is wearing things out. Uh, you know, if evolution were true, how is it possible we would have rocks that are 300 times older than that still above sea level? That doesn't make sense. The oldest rocks on Earth are found in Canada, and they're over 4 billion years old. The reason they're still there is they were once protected by layers above that have since eroded away. They're also not in a part of the continent that has undergone subduction and has been pushed under the Earth's crust. All the answers I've given Kevin today are basic geology and can be learned in a class like Geology 101.